Inspector General made exactly those determinations, uh, that it was an urgent matter, uh, and it met the statutory requirements that it dealt with a serious or flagrant abuse, violation of law, or other misconduct or misuse of resources. What then is supposed to happen is the Director of National Intelligence has seven days to review the complaint, and then they shall provide it to the Congress. And they shall instruct through the Inspector General, the whistleblower, how the whistleblower can come directly to Congress. In the absence of that whistleblower law, there is no lawful mechanism for an intelligence community employee or detailee or contractor to raise a complaint about serious misconduct. Uh, the whole point of the whistleblower statute is not only to encourage those to report problems, abuses, violations of laws, but also to have a legal mechanism to do so and not to disclose classified information uh, because there's no other remedy. That whole purpose is being frustrated here because the Director of National Intelligence has made the unprecedented decision not to share the complaint with Congress. Um, we were informed of this fact after the seven day period in which the Director has to review it and submit it to Congress had expired. No complaint was provided and the Inspector General felt it necessary to inform the Congress that that complaint was being withheld. In the absence of the actions, and I want to thank the Inspector General, in the absence of his actions and coming to our committee, we might not have even known there was a whistleblower complaint alleging a, an urgent concern. Um, we will be releasing the Inspector General's letters, but I want to read one sentence from them. Mr. Atkinson wrote, I set forth the reasons for my concluding that the subject matter involved in the complainant's disclosure not only falls within the DNI's jurisdiction, but relates to one of the most significant and important of the DNI's responsibilities to the American people. This is what's being withheld from Congress right now. We do know that the Department of Justice has been involved in the decision to withhold that information from Congress. We do not know because we cannot get an answer to the question about whether the White House is also involved in preventing this information from coming to Congress. We do not have the complaint. We do not know whether the press reports are accurate or inaccurate about the contents of that complaint. But what I do know is this, if in a matter within the jurisdiction of the Director of National Intelligence, you have an employee of that community or a contractor or a detailee who follows the law and makes a complaint, and it is possible for the subject of that complaint to essentially quash the complaint or keep it from Congress, then this system is badly broken. Now, I don't think this is a problem of the law. I think the law is written very clearly. I think the law is just fine. The problem lies elsewhere. And we're determined to do everything we can to determine what this urgent concern is, to make sure that the national security is protected, and to make sure that this whistleblower is protected. Because the impact of this opinion, which the Department of Justice has been unwilling to share with us, the impact of this opinion is that if the Department of Justice decides that an employee of the intelligence community who comes forward, follows the law, follows the process, is nonetheless outside the process, they're not protected. Which not only means that this whistleblower is not protected, it means no whistleblower is protected. That is the danger of the DOJ's misinterpretation of the law. Uh, so that is where we are right now. Uh, next week, we will have an open hearing with the Director of National Intelligence where he can explain to the country why he believes this urgent concern should not be shared with the Congress. Um, but that's where we are, and I'd be happy to respond to a few questions. Do you, believe, do, you, do you believe that the White House or the President himself are pressuring the Acting Director of National Intelligence not to hand this information over to you? All I do know is this. I don't know um, whether the White House is directly involved because we can't get an answer to that question, but we do know that they are making some claim that a privilege may apply. 
Well, that narrows the category who may be intervening here. We also know that um, there are other uh, institutions involved that um, are preventing us from getting the complaint. And whether this is pressure brought by the White House, whether this is the Director of National Intelligence feeling that he is straitjacketed by this opinion of the Department of Justice, whether the Department of Justice is coordinating its activities with either the White House or the subject of the complaint, we don't know. But given the Inspector General said this is urgent, it can't wait, um, which is a profound concern that we have over what we have seen over the last year, which is a concerted strategy to run out the clock on any information getting to Congress. Here, where it's urgent, um, that is simply not an option. Mr. Schiff, why, why were you not able to get an answer today about whether or not the White House intervened, and why were you not able to get an answer about the substance of the complaint? Well, there is no privilege that covers whether the White House is involved in trying to stifle a whistleblower complaint. And I should say that even if you could make a colorable claim of privilege over the subject matter of the complaint, given that it involves something that the IG has already found to be serious and credible uh, and evidence of wrongdoing of one kind or another, there is no privilege that covers that. There is no privilege to conceal that. There is no privilege to be corrupt. Um, and so that needs to be provided to Congress. We can't get an answer because the Department of Justice and the Director of National Intelligence will not authorize the IG to tell us. Um, and the Inspector General is doing his very best to be very careful that he follow the law. And in some respects, the Inspector General is in the same position of the whistleblower, which is if the Inspector General steps one foot outside of what he's authorized to do, then he is not protected. And so uh, this shows how someone is trying to manipulate the system to keep information about an urgent matter from the Congress. Mr. What is your recourse? What's your recourse? Um, in one of your letters, you stated who your suspicions involved. Who do you think that this allegation of this complaint involves? Well, we know a few things. We know that this is a matter of as I just read the language of the Inspector General, this, the Inspector General is a nonpartisan neutral official here. Um, and we have no reason to question his judgment. His judgment is this is not only within the DNI's jurisdiction, this is squarely within what the American people expect of a Director of National Intelligence. So who is in a position to countermand that? Um, who is in a position to influence an acting director of national intelligence uh, who has not been on the job very long um, to do something completely unprecedented, which is to go outside of his own agency and seek an opinion about whether he has to provide this to Congress? Um, there are a limited number of options that also implicate privilege. And so, um, the shorter answer is we don't know, uh, but there are certainly a lot of indications it is someone at a higher pay grade than the Director of National Intelligence. But in your letter, you said that you suspected this was to protect the President of the United States. Do you stand by the statement in your letter? Uh, I believe that uh, there is an effort to prevent this information getting to Congress. And if the assertion is accurate that the Department of Justice has made and the DNI has affirmed that this involves a potentially privileged communication, then at one level or another, it likely involves either the President or people around him. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman you've, uh, you've already subpoenaed this complaint and you just laid out all of the blocking activity that's happening from being able to get the complaint. What is your actual, what are your options at this point, legally to obtain it? What's your recourse? Well. We will hear more, we will learn more um, next Thursday when the Director of National Intelligence testifies. Uh, and we are exploring with the House General Counsel what our options are. Um, I would imagine if it comes down that we have to go to court to get this, that we will have a very good case 
to seek a temporary restraining order or a mandamus or some urgent form of relief because the Inspector General has said this cannot wait. Uh, so this is not a situation where we can afford to go through weeks or months of litigation in this court or that court. There's an urgency here that I think the courts will recognize. I hope that's not necessary. Um, and I hope that the Director of National Intelligence will reconsider because it's my understanding that by law he can provide this to us and indeed by law he's required to provide this to us. But we will look at whatever remedies we have including when the Director of National Intelligence comes to the Congress for authorization to reprogram funds for one purpose or another. Uh, we will look to whether he is abiding by the law in making a decision about those requests. So we will use whatever leverage we can, but at the end of the day, we are determined to validate the whistleblower process to make sure that people can expose wrongdoing. Could you just last and, uh, because, because what's at stake here goes well beyond this complaint and this president to whether any oversight is possible, any whistleblower is protected, uh, and we're determined to validate that authority of the Congress. Thank you. Do you think the president has the authority to 